So guys, when people have been talking about the Chinese League over the last couple of years, all everyone's been talking about is Jimmer for dead. Jimmer, 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 Jimmer. That Jimmer is like a god over in China, which to an extent he pretty much is. He's still one of the best players in the league. But there's actually a player, a former NBA player, who only actually played eight games total in the NBA, who this season is averaging five and a half more points per game than Jimmer Fredette. And not only that, he's also averaging nine assists per game compared to Jimmer Fredette only averaging, I think it's five assists per game. And that player is Pierre Jackson. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about why he's able to dominate and put up so many points, over 43 points per game in, a, in the Chinese league, which is not that bad a standard of basketball, and also why I think he hasn't made a career in the NBA, and whether I think in the end he will end up being an NBA player or not. But before we get onto the video, we are doing a daily December. We're uploading a video every single day this month. So if you guys like basketball content, subscribe. This is now the fifth day of daily December. We've got another 26 days to go after this. And also we're trying to hit 70,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And right now it's actually looking like we're gonna do it, which is absolutely crazy. And we started off barely over 64,000 subscribers and now we're close to 66,000, so it's absolutely nuts. So if you guys enjoy this content, subscribe. And also a big, big thank you to Athletic Case for sponsoring this video. Sponsorships like this allow me to keep doing this in my job. Stepping up to the couch, it's Brian who led the league last season in cracked screens. But with his new athletic case, it looks like that won't be the case. <laughs> Touchdown, Brian! But anyway, now let's get on to the video. So I was gonna just do an entire breakdown of Pierre Jackson's career, but I recorded that and this video is gonna be like 15 minutes. So I'm going to sh summarize it really, really quickly now. So he was the National Junior College Player of the Year as a sophomore. He won the NIT and was the NIT Most, most Outstanding Player as a senior in college. He ended up getting drafted in the second round of the NBA draft. He set a D-League point scoring record, 58 points in his first year, well, his first year after being drafted. It was looking like he was going to break into the Philadelphia 76ers roster in 2014. However, he tore his Achilles before the season started and was ruled out for the entire year. He didn't get a chance to play in the NBA until December 2016. He ended up playing eight games for the Dallas Mavericks, including starting one, and the one game that he started, he ended up straining his hamstring, and that caused the Dallas Mavericks to waive him and replace him with Yogi Ferrell, and obviously with Yogi Ferrell, the rest is history. And in 2017-2018, he played with Maccabi Tel Aviv in the Israeli League, who are also a EuroLeague team. We averaged 14 and a half points per game in EuroLeague, as well as winning the Israeli League, the Israeli League Cup, and was an all-star in the Israeli League and won an all-star game MVP. But none of you guys are really going to click on this video for any of that. You guys are going to click on this video because he is a guy who is outscoring Jimmer Fredette by five and a half points right now in China. Through 15 games in the Chinese League, Pierre Jackson is averaging 43.5 points per game. He's had multiple 60 plus point games. He is averaging 9.3 assists per game, which is third in the league. These numbers are absolutely incredible. And also last season, he showed that he can play at a higher level because he did quite well in the EuroLeague. So I know you guys might be thinking, why isn't he in the NBA? And not only that, why aren't people talking about him constantly about coming back to the NBA? And there's a reason for that. And the reason for that, like, is nothing other than the fact that Pierre Jackson's 5'10". Offensively, I have absolutely no doubt that Pierre Jackson could hold his own in the NBA. Heck, he did in the eight games he played for the Dallas Mavericks. And a lot of kind of casual fans look at this as if, if you can hold your own offensively in the NBA, you should be able to play in the NBA. Because a lot of people believe there's no defense. It's, that's just a complete myth, and I'm gonna talk about that later on in the video. But anyway, with Pierre Jackson, he definitely would be able to put up some points. And another big problem with guys like Pierre Jackson was the same with someone like Jimmer Fredette, is if you guys watch any of his highlights, if you guys have watched him play through the years, he's a ball dominant player. He's dribble, 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 dribble. When he's on the floor for him to be effective, he's gotta have the ball in his hands a lot. And if you look at the really ball dominant players in the NBA, no offense to Pierre Jackson, but he's just not on the level of guys like Kevin Durant, guys like LeBron James, guys like Russell Westbrook, Harden, the high usage players. He's just not on that level. And that's the way he has to play to be effective. And at the NBA level, he's just not good enough to play that style of play. While again, he could do it for a couple of minutes in games, those players are honestly less and less. And you never know, when Isaiah Thomas eventually goes, when the Dallas Mavericks no longer need JJ Barea, you never know, could that 
position could be completely eradicated from the NBA. The small spark plug guy off the bench that you put on for a few minutes, and that's really the only role Pierre Jackson can play. Also, he'd just get completely eaten alive on defense, especially in today's NBA. In the past, you could honestly build a team with enough kind of defensive enforcers, old school players, that you could almost hide a guy like Pierre Jackson on defense. However, in today's NBA, that's something that's really, really hard to do because teams realize that it's more efficient, especially over 82 games. It takes a lot less effort and it means that there's gonna be a lot less injuries in the long run if teams just switch everything. So all that's basically meant is that teams are now positionless. The point guards have gotten bigger and centers have gotten smaller and faster so that everybody can guard everyone on the floor, which allows teams to switch absolutely everything which is something obviously as a 5'10 point guard he really can't do obviously again Chris Paul is an exception to this but defensively Pierre Jackson is not Chris Paul so just just don't make that argument and also where he is right now in China he's probably making more money than he would in the NBA Isaiah Thomas not even two seasons off scoring nearly 30 a game he's only making about two million a year whereas Pierre Jackson is making over a million playing in China I can guarantee you that if he's averaging 45 points per game in one of the largest markets in the world, obviously over a billion people in China, he's definitely getting some major, major endorsement deals over there since basketball is such a big sport over there. So I can guarantee he's making a lot more money than in the NBA. Obviously, from what I've read for him, the NBA is the end goal. And if he does make the NBA, the only way I could see it happening is if he signs a 10-day contract somewhere and he has a couple of really big games in that 10-day contract, signs for the rest of the season, has a solid end to the season, signs a one-year deal, and towards the end of that one-year deal, has a few bit, few more big games, so he's fresh in teams' minds. But at the same time, Pierre Jackson is going to have to play in the NBA and play really well in order to even get a contract or even get a second 10-day contract. He's a 5'10", inability to switch on defense, he can't just be someone that they think might be good. It's not like getting someone that's ultra athletic that they think they might be able to develop eventually to become good because they're physically ready. Because that's really what teams look for, people that are physically ready for the NBA. And that's been a big, big problem for the little guy over the past few years. And if anything, it's going to get worse and it's not going to get better for him. And even though a lot of people don't like to hear it, it's the harsh truth. So anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe.